Hey, Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and I get this question a lot about our surface imperfection maps that we have in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. People aren't really sure where to put them, what's the best practice, what's the best way to use these things. So I went ahead and made a video showing my favorite ways of using surface imperfection maps in Arnold. So let's check it out. All right, so let's talk about some surface imperfection maps in Arnold here. So if you aren't familiar with Grayscale Gorilla Plus, uh, you should be because it's awesome. And we have a ton of surface imperfection maps, uh, different kinds of kinds of stuff. Scratches, smudges, crust, all kinds of stuff. We also have materials, tons and tons of materials and HDRIs for Plus members. And if you're not a member, go check it out. Anyway, all right, so let's grab in our Plus library here, which you have access to all this amazing stuff. Let's grab one of these cr new crust maps and bring that in. And if you have never heard of a surface imperfection map, generally what they are are black and white tileable images help that help you make things look less perfect. And there are all kinds of stuff. There's in our case we have smudges to make things look smudgy, scratches, we have crust. We have all kinds of stuff that that are going to help you make your stuff look more realistic. And I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite uses of these types of maps today here in Arnold. Okay, so we've got we've dragged our crust in here. And let's go ahead and just isolate that out to the viewport and or the IPR. Let's also tile it so we get a little bit more detail. So typically when I'm using a surface imperfection map, I'm going to be piping it into either a ramp or a range. And let's go ahead and throw it into this ramp so you can see what that looks like. The reason you would throw it into a ramp is that you want to control the white values. You want to be able to clamp it visually. So if I grab pipe it into a ramp like this and I have the type set to custom, I can then sort of like start to clamp my blacks in. I might even be able to, you know, mess around with my white a little bit. I can even add other knots in here and get some really interesting looking effects really quickly here and really break it up a lot. Now, typically I'm not really doing that. Typically I'm just kind of leaving it like this, but I will clamp it down or maybe I'll even invert it. If I right click this and say invert, I can invert that gradient and get a completely different value. So it's taking these black and white values of that map and remapping them along this gradient. I can also change the value of that as well. So if I just reset this down to default, maybe I change this black value to like 50% gray, and maybe this white is gonna be just a little bit, uh, like maybe 69%. So you can really just kind of come in here and mess with it visually and see it in the IPR, which is kind of why I prefer using a ramp. The other method that I sometimes will use is I'll throw it into a range, which is gonna be pretty much the exact same thing as the ramp, but it's gonna be a little, a little bit more uh, precise, not necessarily precise, but it's a little bit easier for me to use this in, let's say, like a roughness where I know the exact value that I want to map, at, map remap this value to. So the change range is exactly what I think. It's got an input range of 0 to 1 and an output range of 0 to 1. So if we clamp that black just by moving the, the input min up, we're doing the same thing that we were doing in that ramp, and we can clamp the white down like that. And then, of course, the output is like, what's the value of the output that you're remapping to? So in our case, it's still 0 to 1. So if we wanted to make this not quite black, we could make that 0.2 or 0.4. And then if we wanted the white to not be white, we could change that to 0.5. And now we've got like a real subtle kind of uh, surface imperfection going. So this is very useful for things like roughness, if you really need to get in there and control the, the actual output max. Okay, so let's take a look at the first use case of this. Typically what I'm using these for is in roughness. So here we have a material where I've got one of our smudges from our plus library brought in, and I'm pushing that into a ramp where I'm just darkening the white a little bit and creating this smudged out look. So if we just isolate this map here, you can see it's kind of a greasy fingerprint kind of smudge map going on. And then we're remapping those values so that they're not completely rough. Because if we left those at default from 0 to 1 and we look at that material, it's way, way, way too rough. So that's remapping and piping this into the roughness of the spec of this material. And it is going to be way, way, way too rough. So we need to grab that ramp and grab that white and just kind of bring it down to a more manageable uh, level. And we might even clamp this black and maybe we don't want it to be completely black because we don't want the shiniest parts of this material to be completely shiny. So that's feeling pretty good. It's feeling pretty much like a, uh, a good amount of roughness there. And again, that's going into the roughness specular. Um, <clears throat> so moving on, we could then start to use these in different places like the bump. So here we have a material where I'm taking that exact same kind of roughness, but I'm now I'm adding not a smudge, actually, this is needs to be renamed. This is actually crust. 
And this is going into a ramp RGB and into a bump. And that bump is going into the normal geometry of this standard surface. Now, this bump, I, I knocked the, uh, the, the bump height way down, but we could also do that in the ramp as well. So if we make this default, and we just say reset to default, it's very, very, very bumpy. It's not really what we want. So maybe we want to clamp the black a little bit, and maybe that black just wants to be 50%, which is kind of the water level of this bump map. And maybe we just want to add that little bit of, of crust in there, but maybe we don't want that to stick out, we want that to stick in. So I'm just going to make this dark instead. And now we have sort of a pitted look to this material. Okay, so the next one that we might want to do is a decal. So what if we want to take a surface imperfection and make it look like a decal is kind of like worn away and is aged a little bit. So let's take a look at that material. So this one is pretty basic. We've got another sort of crust material from the Plus Library piped into an RGB ramp, kind of clamping it down a little bit. And we're multiplying that on this textures alpha. So we're splitting out this textures alpha. By the way, an image texture in Arnold has an output of RGB and A. So if you're using a PNG, you can just turn on the alpha and you can output. Let me just zoom in on that so you guys can see a little bit better. You can actually output the alpha right there. So I'm just basically taking the alpha and I'm multiplying this crust on top of it. From there, I'm going into an, a layer RGBA node, which kind of acts like a Photoshop comp. It's got uh, you know, blending modes and whatnot. And so I'm just basically taking the color in my, in my first layer here, and I'm kind of sticking this decal on top. So it looks like this. So that's going into the standard surface color. And then we have the, still have the same roughness that we set up earlier and the same bump normal that we set up earlier. So if we keep going down into this next one, this next one gets a little bit more complicated. So if we look at this, we're using this time not only the standard surface of this painted material, which you can see right here, but we also introduced another material, kind of this iron material. And if you look there, it's got some scratches in it because we're using some of our surface imperfection scratches, which are found in our Plus Library. We have a whole set of scratch maps, which are fantastic. So with those in here, and we're kind of splitting this off and creating a bump map from it, which is then going into our metal. And then that, that same scratch is getting clamped down into a ramp to reveal a mix shader. So now we're using it to mix two different, completely different materials. So now we've got a, uh, a crust driving this decal. We've got a fingerprint smudge driving the paint. We've got uh, another piece of crust driving the normal. We've got a scratch map driving the uh, two different materials, this mix shader. So again, we're using lots of different ones here to show you the, the variety of stuff that you can do with surface imperfections. Okay, so this last one here is probably the most complicated. Uh, and don't, don't be intimidated by this. This is not, not that much different than what we've been doing. We've got the first couple materials that we talked about before, but the big difference in this one is we also introduced kind of a white painted material that uh, it kind of makes it look like maybe there was another white object next to it and it kind of chipped off some of the paint when it bumped into it. And then this last one is like a dark gray, almost black material. And for that, we're using a crust and we're clamping that map down through a ramp to kind of bring in some dirt into this. And we can make that more dirty just by taking this last one and making it a little darker here, or a little brighter rather, uh, bringing that mat so that it cuts into that dirt a little bit better. So here we're layering one, two, three different mix shaders, and you want to use mix shaders uh, rather than a layered shader because these are a bit more optimized. They're just a little bit more faster. Um, so yeah, we're, it's, very, it's pretty simple. We can just walk through it real quick. We've got our painted material that we set up that we walked through earlier. We're adding that uh, scratches that we're, are revealing that iron. Then this next one is revealing some of that like paint that's kind of rubbed off from another object. Then this last one is dirt. So here in this one shader, we're looking at a bunch of different ways that you can use surface imperfections. We're using it uh, to, to cut out this texture. We're using it in roughness, using it in bump, using it to reveal other materials. So there are like a ton of uses for surface imperfections. And uh, as a Plus member, you get access to all of these. And uh, we, we're constantly coming out with new ones and, and new materials and new HDRIs, uh, new plugins. I'll, I'll, you know, just like... Go check out Plus, basically, is what I'm trying to say, because it's, it's awesome. Anyway, so these are just like some of my favorite uses of surface imperfections, but there really aren't any rules. You can kind of go out there and like mess with them and do what you want, like create what you want with them. That They're kind of malleable that way. 
So I hope you got something out of the video. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's something you want me to dive deeper on in the next one. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If you liked the video, got something out of it, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about our surface imperfection maps over on Grayscale Gorilla Plus, there's a link down below in the description. I highly recommend checking out. We've got tons of awesome stuff. We've got plugins, materials, textures, surface imperfection maps, training. We've got everything over in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So go check it out. And until next time, I'll see you around.